Good evening. I tried to uh, crack my knuckles on the microphone, but uh, I could only get one crack out of there. Uh, I'm a lifetime knuckle cracker, so arthritis should be catching up with me uh, any any day now. Honestly. Celebratory Jack and Coke. Put it in my Captain America cup today. I'm wearing a recognized symbol of hope. That's about as much as I want to get into uh, my current mood at this moment. Uh, as I want, as I as I'd uh, as I'd care to, but uh, let's just say it's been a very interesting week. How's it going, Reed? Uh, yeah, and um, also I'm wearing my I'm wearing my red hat. I'm taking. I'm wasting no time in trying to uh, sort of overwrite uh, red hat stigma. If anybody asked me why I would, you know, why I would want to wear a red hat, I would say because I've been wearing it, uh, you know, because I got this Yankees hat a while ago. I enjoy it very much. It's very comfortable. And for those of for those people that know that I have uh, you know tons of Yankee hats and uh, why under the circumstances I would wear the red one in particular, uh, I uh, I direct you to the scene in Office Space where uh, they ask uh, Michael Bolton about uh, why doesn't he just go by Mike uh, so that nobody would confuse him with the singer and. Um, my response is uh, the same as his response, which is, why should I change? He's the one that sucks. Hopefully you guys will get that reference and to what it refers. Well, it's got down to business. This is going to be quick and probably fairly simple. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, as far as my stuff on here goes, this is probably the first fully... Hey. Hello, Sean. Hello, Lindsay. Everybody's here. Good. And I will waste no more time. We'll waste no further time. And what I'll do is I'll kind of explain as I go what exactly I've got here. This is probably, I believe this is going to be my first, like, strictly black and white uh, Sketchbook Saturday sketch that I've done on Twitch. I, you know, I used to do these all the time before I started getting experimental with uh, doing more color stuff and eventually doing paint. Uh, turn this down a little bit. I'm going to have to turn it down in my ear. There we go. So, well, depending on what that yes is, Lindsay might already know what I'm drawing. <laughs> <laughs> 
or what I'm inking really. This is inking time. I drew this on my lunch break today. I had to work today. That's one of the reasons why the stream is a bit late tonight. Uh, the other reason was because there was something on TV tonight that I just uh, did not want to miss. So, you know, sue me. It's a piano, Sean, so if uh, if that gives you the eye, if that uh, gives it away, then we'll, uh, I'll talk about it in just a minute. It is most certainly a piano. And it was something I had been thinking about doing for a while when, if and when, it became appropriate to do so. Trust me. When will you learn to trust me? Get this out of the way. Man, I really, really need a better sharp a better gigantic sharpie. I got three king size sharpie markers and only one of them is like reasonably functional right now. This is how much sharpie I go through in the course of a sketchbook. That's cool, right off the bat. Five. I got a couple of people watching. That's, that's a good sign. I'll have to remember that. Maybe, late, maybe streaming later on a Saturday is the way to go. Although I also did... Although I did personally invite a couple of you anyway, so...
<laughs> yeah, like I said, I'll get into it in just a minute. Once I get some of the more detail in through one of the more some of the more broad detail intensive parts of this uh, out of the way. Yeah, no, you know, uh, Sean knows what what uh, what I'm drawing, and um, that is also why I decided to uh, do a lot of the pencil artwork for this ahead of time because I knew I'd be streaming late today, and quite frankly, uh, I kind of want to. Quite frankly, tonight I kind of want to be done with this and available to watch something at about 11.30 tonight. Just on the off chance that, uh, we might see something interesting. I don't necessarily know if that's going to happen, but if it does, I'd kind of like to see it live, so. Oh crap, I forgot. You you actually you guys won't get that live where you are, will you? I forget, not everything live uh is live everywhere. Uh Oops. Once again, if you do happen to want to watch it live, I can I might be your hookup. If you happen to want to watch it uh, at 11:30 Eastern. All right, I'm going to quit quit screwing around and actually talk about this. Um Four years ago, lower, let's lower the music a little bit more first. There we go. So I can think straight. Four years ago, um, we. Uh, a few of us, not all. But many of us uh, experienced uh, something pretty bad and pretty uh, affecting in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the election of our president here in the uh, United States. It was a very difficult moment. It was... I remember at the time, this is why I, I laugh a lot about... Uh, 
people go, you know, people uh, sort of going on about how how god awful 2020 was, and I still remember how god awful 2016 was. And uh, it's kind of a toss up, which you know, I mean, both of these years have been uniquely horrible in their own uniquely horrible ways. Hmm. You better have more than these. That's six. Oh, here we go, five. So four years ago, we uh, we dealt with uh, a presidential election that left a lot of us kind of uh, shell-shocked, to say the least. And uh, in a moment that was meant to be sort of uh, a moment of solidarity between, you know, for those people who uh, were affected by the outcome of our election at that time. Uh, also, you know, the one-two punch of uh, the election plus in the same week the passing of um, Leonard Cohen, who is... Uh, Considered by many to be one of the one of the greatest songwriters in the history of American music, certainly American popular music. Um, just a tragic and really affecting time in general. Um, on Saturday Night Live, of all things, uh, and you know, Saturday Night Live has a lot of moments some good some bad some intentional some unintentional some funny some poignant that uh, that for whatever reason whatever of those reasons we they tend to stay with us well Saturday Night Live that week of the uh, the election and the passing of Leonard Cohen um, gave us, instead of the usual comedic, you know, funny, cold opening, um, it opened with uh, the image that I'm drawing now. It's, uh, it's Kate McKinnon dressed up in her uh, Hillary Clinton outfit. at a piano singing a version of uh, I guess arguably Leonard Cohen's uh, best, most well known most beloved song which is Hallelujah um, there's a there's dozens of different versions of it, everybody's got a different uh, version of it that they consider their favorite Up. Uh, most people probably have more than one. Um, for the record, mine is Jeff Buckley's. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> Good, so we're on the same page with that. Everybody has their favorite, and everybody is entitled to have their favorite version of that song. There's a, there's way too many of them to to get on anybody's case about it. Okay, well, anyway. So, Kay McKinnon's, uh, you know in her Hillary Clinton get up and she's uh, she's singing her version of Hallelujah and I would imagine not a dry eye in the house at uh, Rockefeller Center that night 
Um, and by itself, it uh, by itself it would have been an affecting and sort of haunting moment for for a lot of people, myself included, having seen it. I didn't see it live, but I saw it pretty close to live, like not long after. It was, you know, most Saturday Night Live stuff that's worth seeing makes it makes the rounds online pretty close to immediately. And it... Under normal circumstances, it would have been a really sort of haunting and affecting song, uh, a rendition of that song, because most most of them, most versions of that song are. It's one of the most beautiful songs ever written, and you know, everybody's got their favorite, but it's a beautiful song no matter no matter what. But, you know, the combination of events, that point in time, the way a lot of people were feeling at that point in time, I think added something to it. And it certainly stayed with me these four years, particularly at the very end, you know, Kate McKinnon's fight, you know, it seemed pretty clear to me that she was fighting back tears the whole time, uh, right up until the end. Um, she didn't actually cry, but... I would imagine the instant that, you know, the cameras were off of her. It's very possible that she did because she looked that close to it. And before she throws to the uh, introduction of the show, she looks straight into the camera and says, you know, I haven't given up and neither should you. And that's the part that stayed with me. That is the part that uh, has stayed with me the most these past four years. Uh, I have at times said that to people. In different circumstances some similar to the circumstances to which she was addressing that night some not
I guess because in general, the, you know, the idea of uh, never giving up is something that's kind of... Uh, ingrained in me. I'm kind of a stubborn bastard. So I have a natural predisposition towards not uh, giving up. No matter what it is, no matter how hopeless it might seem, my uh, my impulse is usually to uh, do whatever I can to find a way to either uh, make it work or make it better. That's what kept me going during the time that uh, during the time these last couple of years, you know, the this last year where I had to be without a permanent place to live for a while. For most of 2018 into most of 2019. So that's a good chunk of the last, you know, four years. longer than anybody should really have to be without a home without a permanent uh, place to call home Sometimes we keep going because we want to. Sometimes we keep going because we have to. Sometimes we keep going for ourselves. Sometimes we keep going for others. You know. I'm not. It's not in, you know, I have no interest in getting extremely overly philosophical with you guys right now but I think I would hope you guys know what I'm talking about in some way or another Yeah, that's a little bit closer to what I was going for. Okay.
Well, I've got everybody here, or at least some of you. Another quick note, I have not forgotten, I haven't been streaming a whole lot uh, this week compared to how, how much I usually do it, but I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is Simpson Sunday. And I've got an entire internet full of freshly made memes to choose from for tomorrow. Keep that in mind. If you guys just if any of you guys are deciding what you want to do at about mm, five o'clock tomorrow. Five o'clock Eastern tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so principles ransom and fresh moments. <laughs> It was the funniest thing. Years ago, you know, uh, when what happened, what went down in 2016 went down, um, Something that kept me going for a little while, uh, not too long after, not too long after the election in 2016 and all that. That was when I got my my two guitars. My uh, one of them is in the case back there, and one of them is over here. My uh, not there, but there and. There. Get out of the way, shoulder. There. D there. Ugh, this is exhausting. And I swore at that time, at the time I got him, that I was going to learn how to play him within the next four years. I was going to learn at least. Yeah, stupid body. I was going to learn at least enough of how to play to be able to uh, to be able to play something in time for the next election. My idea, and it was after seeing after seeing the Saturday Night Live performance was, I actually really wanted to learn how to play Hallelujah on guitar. Uh, not the hardest song in the world to learn how to play on guitar, but uh, there were, I think there were a few sus chords that uh, needed to be learned and a few interesting 
a few interesting finger positions that would have needed to be learned for that. That uh, I would have liked to have learned, but uh, life kind of ended up getting in the way. And I had to stick my guitars in storage for two years. And since I've been able to get them out, they haven't done a whole lot except sit in those stands behind me while I've, you know, been on to other things that I've been trying to get off the ground, namely the stream. At some point, I will eventually learn how to play Hallelujah on my guitars. I would like that very much. Oops, back to the table cam. Forgot all about that. Here we are. Yeah, I'd like very much to be able to do that. My, uh, what I had really hoped was actually to be able to, like, go all the way to, like, Union Square in New York City, in, you know, in Manhattan, where I pass by frequently. It's kind of a frequent, you know, haunt of mine. I've done a couple of Sketchbook Saturday sketches on the steps at Union Square uh, at various times through, you know, the six years that I've been doing this. And yes, it has been six years. Haven't missed a single Saturday yet. Not going to start today either. That was a nice image that I kind of had in my head of, uh, you know, what I wanted to do at the time. Like I said, you know, life, the real, the real world, kind of put an end to that uh, thing. But that was something, you know, I was doing. It was a thing I was doing to sort of uh, relieve some stress. Sometimes you just need a new project. I've come to learn that, you know, that's the thing I know about myself now is that sometimes you just need a new project. You need something to take some of the stress and aggravation away, whether it's physical, mental, manual, creative, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes it's a little bit of all of those things. Some things work better than others. I tried streaming on election day. I thought that would provide myself and other people with a distraction. Turns out I was too distracted to be able to draw. You know, I finished the thing I was working on. I don't like how it came out. It's right over here. I'm not going to show it to you just yet because I'm actually going to do another version of it. And I'm going to turn that into a bit of an experiment. Into a bit of a lesson, I, if you will, about uh, just how much being stressed and sort of preoccupied can affect your work. I will probably do that on Tuesday. I'll take this uh, drawing that I got over here. I mean, it's in, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not fully hiding it. You guys can watch the video. Uh, from Tuesday, it's up on, on the channel. I just, you know, I have no interest in bringing it back to show you guys again right now here that I'm doing something that I'm much more, <laughs> that I'm much happier with. Uh, Off a little bit. Ugh. 
can also draw better when you're in a good mood, quite possibly. I wouldn't be surprised. The thing is, drawing is my go-to for just about any mood that I'm in. Whether it, you know, whether the drawing that I do is affected by by the mood that I'm in is another thing altogether. But I'll draw just, you know, just about any time for any, you know, at at any time. Um, that's how it's always been for me. Tighten this piano up, and then we're pretty much pretty much done. I told you guys it was gonna be a quick one, mostly because I drew, I did the drawing part earlier today. When it comes to doing portrait drawing, I don't quite, I don't always quite trust myself to do it live in front of, uh, you know, in front of you guys, because sometimes my portraits actually end up pretty good. And other times they end up being a complete disaster, and it takes a very long time for me. Sometimes it takes a very long time for me to get a portrait of, you know, and a likeness of a person to the point where it looks like how I want it to look, and it looks like who it's supposed to look like. And sometimes I don't always want that process to play out in front of everybody. I don't think that's... It sounds like a much more compelling thing to watch live than it really is, believe me. Sometimes I'll take a chance and I'll do it like I did last week. The uh, the artwork I did last week of uh, Jigsaw, I got lucky with that one. I also just, you know, had it in my mind that I, that was going to be a long stream and however long it was going to take me to get it, you know, that's how long it was going to take me. Um, stuff go. I'll use this. And it turned out, you know, I actually took my time with that jigsaw artwork and it actually came out pretty good, I think. I, I actually like, I like how it came out enough to where I will probably end up making that part of the uh, collection. For those of you who are unfamiliar, like, you know, anybody who may be watching uh, you know anybody who may be watching who doesn't know me personally uh, you know a few years ago I did a series of uh, sketchbook Saturday sketches that were classic monsters and I did you know I'm talking about like universal monsters and uh, hammer monsters and uh, stuff like that and what I ended up doing was I, I enjoyed it so much and I liked how they came out so much that I had prints made of them. I had prints made of 14 of them and I ended up uh, selling them at conventions and they said, that, you know, depending on the convention, they actually ended up selling pretty well. People seem to like them a lot. And it just so happens that this past October, this Halloween season, I've been doing a lot of artwork of somewhat more current classic monsters. So, what I ended up deciding I wanted to do was to make enough of those to where I can do a new set of prints. And this time it would be modern classic monsters.
and that could be a thing I could also sell at different conventions. It would actually also give me uh, give me something that I could offer to try to get into a chiller theater convention. That's the uh, big horror convention in uh, New Jersey that I've been to many times. Uh, Sean, if Sean's still uh, if Sean's still listening, he knows it well because that's where. I met uh, Heather Langenkamp and gave her the uh, the Long Road to Ruin title card print. That's where I met uh, you know uh, Doug Jones, Ashley Lawrence, Christopher Young, all from Hellraiser from the Hellraiser series, and I was able to give them prints of artwork that I had done. Met a lot of cool people. I met a lot of cool people at that convention. So I kind of want to see if I can make a go of it uh, as, a, as an exhibitor. Um, it seems like a good it seems like a good crowd there. It's not too far for me to travel. I mean it's it's far, but it's not prohibitively far. So that's something I'd like to do in the in the near future. I mean, once we're all back, able to travel and able to uh, congregate once again. Something I'd like to do. What do you think, guys? Do you think it looks done to you? Yeah, that's something that I kind of struggle with, and that's, you know, that's why this took me, that's why, like I said, it took me a lot of, most of my lunch breaks, you know, at, at work today to uh, really get it down, because uh, it's, uh, it's a tricky thing, likenesses and portraits and that sort of thing. It's not easy. Once you get the hang of it, it's easier, but it's never 100% easy. Probably not sing when I've been drinking. Ironically, that's the only time that I'm, you know, that I feel confident enough to sing. When that confidence is totally artificial.
I think I'm gonna quote while I'm ahead because otherwise I'm just gonna end up uh, putting unnecessary details in here. I'm not giving up, and neither should you. And I hope you haven't. Because we got a world of work ahead of us, don't we? Thanks, everybody, for coming for this uh, quick little thing that I wanted to do today. Um... If you guys like this uh, and want to see more just straight up black and white or you know portrait artwork let me know I'm always down to do more I'm down to do whatever uh, will get people coming back um, I appreciate everybody that dropped by uh, like I said I'll be back tomorrow I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern for uh, Simpson Sunday we'll see how that works out that should be uh, that should be a good time and it'll be a longer stream than this, and it'll be uh, a little bit happier. It's, uh, it should be a good time. So I hope you guys all come back for that, too. Uh, till then, uh, you can follow me. I am Epic Benjamin J on all of the things, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. And uh, if, if you follow me on any of those, you can find out, uh, you can often find out when I'm going live, when I will be going live, uh, when I have gone live, when I'm thinking about going live. And uh, you can stay updated on all of the art that I produce on this very stream and beyond. So I hope you do that. I hope you follow and I hope you guys all come back and uh, hang out with me again. I'll be back tomorrow and I'll probably be back on Tuesday for a redux of uh, my election day artwork and hopefully it'll be a much better one uh, and it'll be a uh, nice contrast to uh, and it'll be an interesting experiment to see how that's you know what a difference a week can make I guess you know um, we'll see but uh, till then Everybody, please remember, I cannot stress this enough now more than ever. Never, ever stop making friends through art. Art can make friends. Art can save lives. Art can heal wounds. Art can heal a lot of things. Art can make a lot of things better. So I hope everybody partakes in your own way, whatever art you uh, choose to pursue. I hope you continue to pursue it, and I hope it brings you 
joy and friendship wherever you bring it because that's uh, you know how I always try to roll so yeah never ever stop making friends through art guys and uh, until I see you all again everybody please remember 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 stay safe laugh hard ride fast be kind <laughs>